go. Hey everybody, my name's Seth. Um, I'm one of the pharmacy students, and today I'm going to be doing a brief drug review on acetaminophen. Uh, just a general outline, I'll go with a general overview of the drug, um, and then we'll get into dosing, adverse events, some drug interactions, and then precautions with prescribing the medication. Um, first is the name and classification of the drug. Uh, a lot of people know it as acetaminophen. It's also known as uh, paracetamol, and it's mainly uh, UK. Um, brand name is Tylenol. I think everybody's heard of that. And then the chemical name is acetyl paraaminophenol. And if you didn't know, that's where the acronym APAP came from. Um, it's classified as an analgesic or a pain reliever and an antipyretic, so it reduces fever. Um, and then, of course, its primary indications are pain and fever. Um, I'd just like to say that Tylenol works a lot like an NSAID, um, except they really don't know for a fact why it produces its analgesia. Um, it does inhibit prostaglandins in the CNS, and then it does um, block some uh, pain impulses in the periphery. It also produces um, the fever reducing effects, which um, happen through inhibition of pyrogens or um, fever producing proteins from the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus can, is kind of considered our uh, thermostat of our body. And then unlike NSAIDs, it's important to know that acetaminophen doesn't produce any anti-inflammatory effects or not to the extent that NSAIDs do and therefore we don't use it in that fashion. Um, it comes in quite a few dosage forms by mouth. Uh, caplets, capsules, tablets, and liquids. It also comes as um, IV and then rectal suppositories. At the clinic, we have 125 milligrams per 5 ml solution and then 160 milligrams per 5 ml suspension. That's mainly for children. And then we have the 325 milligram tablets and the 500 milligram caplets. Um, adult dosing for both adults and children, uh, the dosing for fever and pain are the same. Um, the 325 milligram tablets for adults, uh, you take two tablets a day or 650 milligrams, or two tablets every four to six hours, and that would be 650 milligrams per dose, and then there's a max dose on that of 10, 10 tablets, or 3,250 milligrams per day. And then with the 500 milligram caplets, um, similar, it's two tablets. It's only every six hours. There's no four hour frequency that's indicated. And that would be 1,000 milligrams every six hours. And that also is the um, max dose of 3,000 milligrams per day, or six tablets, or caplets. Um, the max daily dose for an adult is four grams, but it's really recommended that we stick closer to three grams. So three grams or less is best. Um, Higher doses don't really mean greater pain relief or fever reduction. Um, keeping it at that three gram per day generally helps to reduce um, hepatotoxicity, especially patients who already have um, some form of liver disease. The pediatric dosing, uh, this is probably the most important slide here. Um, so at the clinic, like I said, there's the solution 120 milligrams per five milliliters, and the suspension that is 160 per five milliliters. Um, and the dose for any children ages less than 12 for a liquid dosage form is 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram, and that's every four to six hours. Um, now in that interval, basically that's what that's saying is any dose in that interval is equally effective. The higher dose isn't more effective. We want to keep it within that interval. So what we do is we start at the 10 milligrams and then round up and try to get um, a certain ml amount that makes the most sense that we can actually measure that's easy for the patient to measure. Um, like I said, going up to 15 isn't really going to produce much more of an effect and you really don't want to round up over that 15 milligram per kilogram mark. Um, and on the other side, you don't want to round down to below the 10 milligram per kilogram. And like I said, that's for children aged less than 12. If they are healthy children between ages 6 and 11, and they are able to swallow a 
tablet. Uh, they're not very big, so <clears throat> they should be able to take tablets pretty well. Um, the dose is 325 milligrams, or one tablet every four to six hours. Um, and then any children greater than 11, so 12 or older, are on the adult dosing. Uh, I just want to point out that there are renal dose adjustments for acetaminophen, but there, there's nothing really too, concern, uh, too concerning. You don't really see any dose adjustments until you get into like a real active kidney disease. And at that point, it's only changing the frequency of the dosing and not the actual dose itself. And then with the peds, really, you're not changing any dosing unless they have renal failure. Monitoring of medication uh, for pain, any validated pain scale score, <clears throat> if there has been a pain reduction, that's pretty simple. And then with fever, temperature, has their temperature went down to normal or towards normal. Um, with safety, the only thing that you really have to worry about are adverse effects. And common adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, uh, difficulty sleeping, constipation, maybe itchiness, headache, um, also agitation. And then the serious include some skin reactions such as Stephen Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrosis. There's also the chance of pneumonitis and Probably the most important is hepatotoxicity or um, liver toxicity. So some drug interactions um, that kind of stood out to me. Some of them I don't. I haven't really seen some of the medications at this clinic being used. Uh, medications that increase Tylenol levels would be probenicid, decrease phenytoin or lamotrigine, and then there is the interaction with uh, warfarin or anticoagulants that there is an increase in anticoagulant effect. Um, the most important is pretty much anything that also puts you at risk of uh, hepatotoxicity or uh, liver injury. The big one being alcohol. Uh, patients should know not to take any alcohol while they're taking the medication. Um, <clears throat> Isoniazid is also another drug that is known for hepatotoxicity. And then there are other medications and substances that can cause liver injury. Um, and then another thing is there's a lot of products that contain acetaminophen that we don't really think about containing them, or at least patients might not. Some like over-the-counter cough and cold medications might have additional acetaminophen, and in their heads they're not adding up that amount to three or four grams a day, so that's something to make sure that they're not taking. Um, Precautions, it's really risk versus benefit. These all have to do with liver um, impairment. The first being acetaminophen and someone who is an alcoholic or chronically drinks alcohol, um, they are already at increased risk of hepatic impairment. Somebody who already has an underlying liver disease um, with someone at increased risk. I thought it's pretty interesting. There's actual no hepatic dose adjustment for a level of injury until you get to severe, which is just contraindicated. You cannot take acetaminophen, but moderate, mild um, hepatic impairment, it doesn't matter. Uh, they just say use cautiously. Um, malnutrition, if somebody's malnourished, they, that just puts them at an increased risk of hepatic impairment. And then somebody with poor kidney function can also be at um, an increased risk of hepatic impairment. So the key points, pretty much, is that the max dose for an adult is four grams. We want to keep that more towards three grams, especially for those who have uh, some kind of underlying disease, they're an alcoholic, um, they're going to drink while they're on the medication, anything that could increase the risk of hepatotoxicity. For children, the final dose, after calculated based on their weight, should be between 10 and 15 milligrams per kilogram. We shut around below or above that, it should remain in there and choosing maybe one milliliter higher just towards more towards the 15 is not going to produce any more of an effect than the lower dose um, and then just avoiding medications or substances that also increase your risk of liver injury which include alcohol other acetaminophen containing products um, and then really being cautious of prescribing acetaminophen within the recommended amount any questions? I have a question. So I think like in adults, there's been a lot of publicity about Tylenol toxicity. And I think I've even seen some recommendations for limiting to two grams a day. Have you ever heard of that? Or 
I, how recent is that? Yeah, past year. I mean, I haven't seen anything about two grams in numbers. Mm -hmm. No. So three grams is what you've seen. Yeah. And we'll call it for, you have no other options here. Yeah, some of our patients yeah. and adults, they take every day for years. So we worry about the three grams a day. They really don't say too much. They just kind of have the blanket statement of use cautiously and obviously contraindication if they really do have a liver injury. But other than that, they just say use cautiously. There's no like child Q score that they go by or anything. Um, but no, I didn't see anything about the two grams, and they just, they just kind of say, oh, use three grams. But even like I think it's the 325 is the max dose is still greater than three grams by the manufacturer. So oh. it's really up to the prescriber to. Okay, Thank you. 